everybody, it's April Dawn. Let's talk about it. How to get away with murder. This is season four, episode 12. We getting heated up. It's a lot of stuff going on at one time, so I broke it into just the stories, and I'll go through each story with, you know, each plot line, okay? So we gonna break it down that way. So let's go ahead and get started. We start off this week with Isaac in the car. So we see what happened to him after his testimony on the stage, and you know they blasting him all out about his daughter and whatnot. So he's in his car, he's going through it, y'all. He's screaming, he hollering, trying to get himself together. Um, You see that he wants to call. I couldn't see who the number was. I couldn't tell if it was Annalise or like his sponsor or something. But he decides not to do that and he drives off. So he ends up at this food truck. He orders a burger and fries and he asks for it wrapped in foil. So when he get back to the house, he starts dumping everything out in the trash. I was like, damn, drugs, you don't even want to eat. Listen, they be fiending for that, for that narcotic. So he busts open the packet and it has some pills in it. He crushes those pills up into a thing. And y'all, he put, he put his face in there like he would eat somebody's booty. I was like, damn. Damn, boy, the drugs got you out there bad boy the drugs be having you out here Isaac is in a bad place so at the same time when he's sleeping we see Annalise knocking on the door knocking on the door she can't get to him can't get him to wake up or whatever so the next day we see Annalise at his door in the morning and he finally he comes home when she's knocking on his door she like you didn't respond to my calls what's going on and he's like I was with my girlfriend so they go into the house and he's shuffling around a little bit and she like listen I know you know they trying to frame you I know they don't have any evidence on you they should drop the case eventually he tells her that he wasn't with his girlfriend the night before that he was high he says he's upset because he's been sober for 23 years and he threw it all away because it is one thing and so she's like you know nobody's gonna mess with you from the DA's office I will find out if anybody messing with you and he like you got Bonnie working for you how you got Bonnie working for you I was just trying to take each other head off and she was like listen we worked it all out so no worries let me help you let me fix this for you you know she's swooping in to save the damn day and I was like girl why why you got so much stuff going on already you don't need to be trying to help his ass okay throughout the episode they have this routine where they meet for breakfast and they eat breakfast and they kind of swap stories about you know her alcoholism how you got started and you know his heroin addiction he tells her about this drug that he was using he says it wasn't heroin he was using the night before it was k pad it's an opioid it's like oxycodone on one of them type of pills okay it's an opioid same drugs in it as heroin which is which are opiates throughout this scene it was interesting to me how Annalise kept um quiet she didn't really add too much to the conversation she kind of just let him talk and vent and vent and one way i think it maybe she was like you know trying to figure out what his deal was and you know how you just let somebody talk they will talk themselves into a hole maybe or in another way it seemed like she was genuinely enjoying get to know him and i'm like at least you better not like him okay this boy just did drugs last night and you talk about Girl, ain't nobody got time to be falling in love with no crackheads, okay? We ain't got time for so, it. So, later on, she get with Bonnie, and Bonnie tells him about the toxicology report that was found from the daughter, and apparently the daughter had k pad in her system when she died. That was the same drugs that Isaac was, Isaac was using. So, she goes to Isaac's house, and she confronts him and says, did you give your daughter the drugs that killed her? Isaac finally tells the whole story. See, this is my problem with Isaac. He a damn lie. And, like, after, it was like he lied every step of the way on this episode, and so like every lie he tell it just like ruin his credibility like you lying about you was with a girlfriend you was out there doing dope that you won 23 years sober after you had did the damn dope you told you still lied and said you was 23 years sober when you knew that was a lie so apparently his daughter knew something was up with him he said she she must have known what was up with him so he had relapsed a few years ago when Stella, Stella passed away. Apparently he had a bag of pills in the house and when he came home, Stella had taken most of the pills. He said, damn near all the pills in the bag. He knew it was his fault so he panicked and he first of all he tried to resuscitate her so that takes up some of the 15 minutes and then he flushed all the drugs and he texted his wife with his daughter's phone saying you know I can't take it anymore or something like that. Put the phone in the daughter's hands. So that's what took the whole 15 minutes and then he called the police and all of that. So he lied and he didn't want to make it look like it was his fault. So child, I was just like, okay, at that point, Annalise should have just left that whole situation alone because now 
now we delving into other other situations and lies and things that people not gonna believe a jury just gonna put you in jail so Anna drops by Bonnie's and she convinces Bonnie to try to get the ADA to shut the case down she said she can't go to Denver with this and she said well try to convince the ADA to shut the case down so Bonnie takes it upon herself to go to the ADA's office she kind of flirt a little bit say she'll help him look over the file see if there's any evidence or any way they can charge the guy so you know the guy comes back to a couple times through the episode so, and you know, she update him on the situation saying she need a little bit more time, you know, buy her a drink and she'll talk about Annalise and all this here. And at the end of the episode, he calls her into the office and he put two and two together. He's not a stupid man. He says, I wasn't really going to pay attention to this case, girl. I wasn't even thinking about this damn case until you came in my office smiling at me and I figured out that you still working for Annalise. That's why you worried about it. He says, so I went to Denver and I told him to file manslaughter charges on him or maybe even second degree murder. Get out of my office. Bonnie started tripping, tripping, tripping. I mean, really, like, you know, about to lose it. And then all of a sudden, she just clicks in her brain, and she goes to Denver, and she has that tape. She plays the tape for him and says, listen, I will spill this shit all over the place. You gonna shut down this case against Isaac? That's what you gonna do, okay? And then she told him something else. Like, you can kill me, you can blow me up or whatever, but this information gonna get out. And so, of course, Denver's a bitch. He always do that when you threaten him. Of course, he gonna bend to her will, so they got rid of the case against Isaac. Cool. Annalise goes to Isaac's house to tell him this, and when she gets to Isaac's house, He's like, oh, you know, that's great. That's wonderful. Because earlier that day, he had texted her a picture. He was at breakfast, and he was like, it's not going to be good without you. And she kind of smiled. I was like, y'all better not. What you ain't going to do is put Annalise with no drug addict. We ain't got time for no drug addict and no alcohol at the beginning together. Child, she just go on home tonight. Just go on back to your baby, girl. Just go on back to him. He all smiling and wonderful and great. And then he hugs. He goes to kiss her. And she backs up. Almost when they was about to kiss, but she backs up off him. And she like, wait a minute. Minute. you high so apparently this whole time child he been high this whole time he been pulling the wool over everybody's eyes honey that boy was out there getting high all night long and he back on that narcotic Annalise said you know what you got a problem you need help and I can't give it to you. And so he started trying to scream at her and blame her. It's all because of you I'm in this mess because you're a narcissist and everybody around you enable you and you need to be told no and I got sucked into your mess. And for the first time in this whole series, Annalise finally stood up for herself and said, bitch, I ain't, I ain't make you do nothing. You told me that you can't make nobody be somebody they don't want to be. So it ain't my fault you decided to do this. You put yourself in your own mess and you was in this mess before I even knew me. I came to you for help. He said something about you ruining me. And he was like, I, she said, I ain't ruin you. But if I did, I'm going to keep on going. So she called Jacqueline and says, Jacqueline, your husband over here tripping, bitch. He back on that shit. And now he tripping. She said, ask him about Stella. And she hang up the phone and she got at his apartment. Now, low key, he looked like he was finna do something. Like, he was trying to get to her. I said, oh, no, you better hit that bitch with a bottle. Okay, I won't play that. No, guy. And she got out of the apartment. I feel like. This is going to come back to bite Annalise in the butt because you know she leaving a trail of bodies now. Remember the lady from the first part of the season? Now him. All these people that's hating her or blaming her for their problems, like that's going to manifest itself in some type of way we don't want it to manifest. Okay, Annalise be laid up again in the hospital at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. Frank finds out that Sandrine, Sandrine, okay, because we going to call her Sandrine, honey. Ooh, wah, wah, ooh, wee, wee, ooh, bonjour. Has been calling Jorge every day of the week. And so he wants to know why he gets in touch or he thinks they're working together and he calls Bonnie and tells Bonnie that now Bonnie tells uh, Bonnie says he needs to tell Laura but he says no he's not gonna tell her until he figure out what's going on later on Laura finds out from the judge that she gets a visitation with her son I think it's the next day Frank gets in touch with her and when she's on the phone with Frank she's telling him hey you need to stop doing what you're doing because if my dad finds out he's going to prevent me and keep my son you know he's gonna keep my son away from me Frank says he's gonna stop but we all know he's not gonna stop so we go to the visitation listen Laura mama is icy with the shade okay she was like okay it's nice to see you we'll see you when we done and she was like no I want him to be here and going to see the baby y'all that freaking baby was so cute he was like a little caramel just dropped 
cute y'all the baby was gorgeous I don't know who baby that is but your baby is cute she sees the baby she hugs the baby it was so nice to have a moment where she could spend time with her child then they take the baby away you know after the visit is over but the whole reason Frank goes to the visitation is because he thought Laurel's dad was gonna be there so when they get there Laurel's mom does say I called I was calling your daddy every day this week because I didn't want him to come I wanted you to be able to spend this time with your child alone so um Frank puts together that's solved okay well I, I know why she been calling me every week it still don't not it still don't mean they not working together y'all but you know that was enough to placate him for the moment but he still wants to know why and how she knows Wes. So later on in the episode, she he confronts her at the end of the episode and says, listen, I've been tracking your phone and I know you were seeing Wes. And so instead of me going all around the bush, I'm just gonna ask you, how do you know Kristoff? And all we was met with was like a, a gaze from her face. So we'll we'll see how she know Kristoff on March the 1st, y'all, in three weeks. The class action lawsuit. The Annalise and the crew are preparing for the class action the first day, the, um, the opening arguments. Michaela and and kind of go back and forth a lot about how they're going to present the argument. Are they going to do a side story? Are they going to present it statistically and, and all of that? Annalise and Nate are visiting Nate's father in the prison and they are going over his testimony about how, you know, what happened when he killed the other inmate and how did he end up in jail for so long. He talks about, y'all, it was horrible about how, you know, he was on parole, he couldn't get a ticket, he couldn't do this, he couldn't do that, he had to be in by curfew, but he couldn't get a job, but he owed those courts in the state so much money. So it's like a cash 22 you're in a you caught in a system and anything you do wrong you can end up with a longer sentence than what you had from the beginning and that's up what happened and he said when he got in a fight with the dude he said he was a boxer he, like Nate was boxing y'all started a couple episodes ago and glistening sweat was glistening all over his body you remember that yeah I do he said a dude walked up to him and was like I want to see what the boxer got inside of him and he started fighting he hit him first so he said I jumped on him and I beat him and I felt his his head crack under my fist and she says well how long were you in solitary confinement he says oh about a month she says no sir it was a year so and then they put him right back in solitary confinement y'all I mean that's enough to drive anybody crazy I was about to go crazy and I was in the house for three days by myself imagine being in a one small ass room for a whole year and then the first time you get out somebody try to mess with you of course you're gonna go crazy I mean that would drive anybody mentally insane so the lawsuit has started and everybody's there for the first day so they get there they're getting ready to present the opening arguments and right when they are someone walks in and basically the Supreme Court of uh, Pennsylvania has decided that they're going to take over the case which they have the right to do and they want Annalise to write a brief and that brief will be the only evidence that will be submitted for them to decide whether or not they want to take on the case or if it will be dismissed. Everybody's pissed off Annalise was like, there's really nothing she can do about it. It just is what it is. You know, they have the right to do it. And Nate thanks her. I mean, he gives her thanks for for trying. And then he goes to the prison to tell his father. You know, his father's like, you think I can't take no bad news? And, and you know, Annalise decided she don't need me for her case. And all these different things he's just assuming. So he's responding with anger because he don't know how to deal. So, you know, he tell him he good for good. He done for good. He gets up and he leaves. Now, later on in the episode, they find out that the case was dismissed. She, Annalise, goes and the judges tell her that the case was dismissed so she's kind of upset about that like I said Nate thanks her for all the work that she's done and then he goes back to the prison and he tell his father listen which this was such a nice moment listen you might have lost the court case but you didn't lose me I'm your son I'm going to keep coming he was like you don't know me I'm not no liar you know I'm coming here to see you and basically he's trying to rekindle the relationship with his father which is so nice y'all especially in these type of relationships like I said y'all know I work in the school system and I see this every single day kids who have never met their father because their daddy been in jail their whole life or their mom in jail or their parents are in and out of jail all the time so their whole life is just tossed around so this is a nice storyline to see them even after all that horrible shit they done been through in their both of their lives that they can still try to rekindle whatever relationship they have left because y'all truly family is family i learned that hard lesson myself about my father and things that I wish I would have did and said and done before he passed away. So family is family. Uh, even how fucked up it might be. And I'm saying that I'm saying the F word to really emphasize that point because I know some people's families are really jacked up. If you can, if it's possible, try to save that relationship. Okay, try. That's a great thing. So, so Kayla decides 
she has this bold idea. She doesn't want to give up on the law, the class action lawsuit. She was like, we can get her by the United States Supreme Court. And they're like, nobody. The Supreme Court only take 2% of the case. They not going to take this case. And she like, listen, to get your case heard, you got to know people. You got to know people who move it, who influence it, who got connections and this and the other. I know somebody like that. And my God, he did it. Won't he win? Yes, he will. The next scene. Opened up and Olivia Pope was writing on a chalkboard how to get away with a skin. I said, Yes, yes, yes. Y'all, my mind was like, Poof. I love the way they introduced it. I was like, You know what? Michaela probably do know somebody who know her because she ran in them type of rich upper crest circles or whatever. So she probably knows somebody who knows somebody who know Olivia Pope. And this is how they're gonna tie it together. They're gonna take it to the Supreme Court. I am so excited about this, y'all. Okay, and a little extra was McKay, I'm kind of decided he want to go back to school. He going to enroll in summer courses that he'll be up with the rest of them, you know, for the next semester. And he decided he want to be engaged to Oliver and they going to get married, married, married. But y'all, they be back and forth so much because it was like two episodes ago, Connor Oliver was over it and I was over him. He was much less aggravating this season. And this is how we like Oliver. In his side role, he just be quiet and hack people computers. That's all the fuck he need to do. Like the people on NCIS, the people on um, criminal minds you got the one person in the room that's what they do that's their thing that's what he need to do he not a field agent you feel what i'm trying to say so i liked him this week he kept it cute i ain't gonna lie y'all know i don't like michaela but michaela you all right with me this week sis you got a point for that black girl magic okay i was like you better know her you better know olivia paul i'm into it i can't wait i, I i'm so excited and i just can't hide it so you all in all how to get away with murder and scandal this week were excellent we do have to wait three weeks till we see the next episode march the first but i am so friggin hyped because between in the meantime between time black pants are coming out so we'll have something to talk about pretty soon okay so i want to hear what you thought about this episode don't forget to like kind of oh one more thing i want to add bonnie might die i think bonnie might die because or it's gonna be you know she putting herself in danger, girl, okay? Because after she done threw herself out there, like she know all that information, they gonna be coming for her real hard. So, I wanna see what happens with Bonnie, you know, this year. I think that she might be put on the chopping block. And, oh, one more thing, when they do the crossover, I got to have Hook and Frank get together and go do some spy creepy shit, and I, I wanna see it. I wanna see it happen. So, I wanna hear your thoughts about the episode. It was a great episode, I'm so excited about it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share this with your friends. I will holla at y'all next week. Peace.